we now know enough Python that we can start to model our creatures in Python. Well, at least a simple version of those creatures. I don't know if you've ever read this book, Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions. It's a great book. It's been around for a while. I read it back, I think, when I was in graduate school. One of the fun parts is Lineland, and that is this universe which is only one-dimensional. Creatures live in this world, and all they can do is look left or right and move left or right. It's certainly not three-dimensional, and it's not even two-dimensional on a plane. This simple Lineland is the kind of place that I'd like to start our modeling with. So how are we going to model it? We need to start by thinking of a data structure that will represent Lineland, a sequence of places in space. Well, I have just the data structure in mind, a list. What if we make a list that represents the world, where each location in the list represents the thing in that place in the world? And what might the thing in the world be? Well, maybe there's nothing there, or maybe there's some food, or maybe there's a creature. So we can go ahead and start to make this simple kind of line world. Let's take a look at what that might look like in Python. So we're going to start by defining a variable called world, which has a list which represents the world. Now, I'm not going to try and generalize this just yet to be a world of arbitrary size. We'll make this a world of fixed size, say eight elements. And what we can do is start off with an empty world. So in other words, we'll have a list of eight items. And what I'm going to do is put in each slot an empty string. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then what we'll do is we'll put um, food where we want there to be food. Say, and we'll just put the string food. And then wherever we want the creature to be, we'll call that me. We'll just put me, okay? And so now we have a simple model of the world and we can print it out. We can print it out in the same way that we did before. We can use a for loop for cell in world. In other words, we'll iterate over all of the locations in the world. I'll just call them cells. And what we can do is generate a string that is going to be very pretty and print it out. So we will um, uh, start off by making a line which is empty. This is the line that we're going to print. And we'll, for each cell, we can just add on to the line that cell. Uh, for now, that's what we'll start. It won't be that pretty. And uh, then when we're done with this loop generating that line, we'll print the line. We can run this. And all we get is me food because the blank lines, the blank cells don't get printed because they aren't anything. So what we really want to say is if a cell is empty, we want to print something that takes up some space. In fact, what would be really uh, nice is if every cell took up a, the same number of characters, say four characters. So what we can do is use an if statement to figure out what is in the world. So if the cell is equal to an empty string, remember that, then we can say the line should get just four empty spaces. Else, if the cell is me, then what we want to print, well, need two equal signs there, then we want to print, generate on the line, something that's a little prettier, say space, me, space. So it's going to be four characters, but I'll be in it. Finally, if the cell contains food, then we'll just print out, add, add food to it. Now when we do this, we run this, we get an error because I forgot the colon after this if statement, this elif statement, and after this one. Try again, and there we go. Um, 
maybe we should have something more explicit to represent that the empty cells are empty. Let's put two underscores. Now when we print it, we'll be able to see what's there. Now we can see more clearly in the output. Empty, empty, me, empty, empty, food, empty, empty. Okay, this is nice. In fact, this whole thing here is a nice function. What it does is it takes the world and it displays it. So let's define a function called display world and just indent all of these lines so they all get executed as the body of this function. And now we can call display world and it'll do the same thing. There we go. All right, so all we've got now is a simple model of the world where we can display it. What I'd really like to be able to do is manipulate the world. Maybe I want to move me towards the food. So conceptually, what I'd like to be able to do is find where I am and move me, say, to the right. So imagine that I had a function called move right, and it did something. Then I would be able to use this move right and display the world again and if move right was implemented properly then we would uh, what this program would do is it would print two lines first it would print the world in the current state then it would move me to the right and print it again um, right now uh, move right doesn't do anything uh, so nothing's going to happen yet but let's see how can we modify the world so in order to move me in the world to the right what I need to do is find out where I am, then I need to remove me from the list, and then I need to insert me one location to the right of where I was before. So there's three steps, and I can implement those three steps with one line of code each. If we look at the top of the file, we can remember that the world model stored either an empty string, the string ME to represent where the creature where I am, or food to represent where the food is. So to move right, what we need to do is find where me is, replace it with an empty string, and then move me one cell to the right. So here's how we can do that. We start by uh, finding where me is, and we can do that by using the index method and searching the list, the world list for the string me, and it will return the index in the world list where me is. And so we can store that index. So in this case, if world has this value, then it will return an index of two. So the first thing we then, or the second thing we want to do is then replace the cell at index number two with an empty string. And we can do that simply by saying world of LOC equals empty string. And then the final step is to insert me one step over to the one cell over to the right. And we can do that by modifying the world list at the location at the index LOC plus one. And we'll set it to me. So now let's see what happens if we display the world, move to the right, and then display the world again. When we run this, we can see at the bottom, sure enough, me gets moved one cell to the right, exactly as we had hoped. Let's move to the right and display the world again. Me moves one step one more over, and if we do it one more time and run again, Finally, me replaces the food, presumably because it ate it, and uh, we are done. We have now a simple method for modeling a one-dimensional world with a creature that can move.